This tutorial outlines 10 basic steps you can follow to create your own podcast. I outline this tutorial I call Path to Podcasting using a mind map known as Simple Mind. Simple Mind mind mapping software is available from www.simplemind.eu that's spelled S I M P L E M I N D dot E U in a free and paid version. I wrote a book entitled The Fun is in the Journey that discusses the use of mind maps, calendars, and freeform databases. If you're interested in mind maps, you might like my book The Fun is in the Journey. Available on Amazon or at www.opportuno.org. That's spelled O P O R T U N O dot O R G. I thought since I outlined this tutorial using a mind map, I would present this tutorial to you using the mind map. So you can jump to any of the 10 steps easily. In the description below this video, you'll see a timeline listing all 10 steps. To quickly and easily go to each of the 10 steps in the video, just click on the step you want to go to in the timeline available in the description section of this video. By focusing on just one step at a time, eventually you will have your own podcast online. Okay, now we will begin the tutorial. Step 1. Path to Podcasting Choose theme that interests you. You've probably heard the saying, do what you love, and you'll never have to work a day in your life. What is something you enjoy learning about, talking about, and sharing with others? People will choose podcasts they have an interest in. If a podcast is all over the map talking about many subjects, people will not know what your podcast is about and not be a continued listener. Chances are, if you're passionate and love a certain subject, others will also. Find your particular niche and share it with others. Keep learning and keep teaching and sharing in the subject you care about most, and people interested in that same subject will become loyal. Continued listeners to your podcast. Step 2. Path to Podcasting. Podcast Name. Name your podcast and website and social media with same name. Think of a name for your podcast and website that has not been taken. Just go to www. Bluehost.com forward slash domains to see if the podcast name you want is available. Throughout this tutorial, I'll refer to URL links. All links used in this video will be in the description shown below the video. Would recommend a .com, .net, or .org extension, or any extension you'd like is okay. A short, memorable, one- or two-word name related to what your podcast and website is all about would be great. Suggestions Number one, make sure there are not other podcasts with the same name so you'll be easily searched and not confused with other podcasts. Number two, 
if a favorite name of yours is taken, then look at that same name in other domain extensions or in another widely spoken language. If the same name in another language that is easy, pleasant to say, and memorable, then use that name if not taken. Once you find a domain name not taken, go or call online to Bluehost and register your domain. Just park your domain name on Bluehost without getting hosting service. Only about $20, more or less, per year. Would recommend you also pay for private registration so no one will see your email, etc. of your domain to keep junk mail out. Then, someday, if you want a website too, To go along with your podcast name, you'll know you have the same name for your website as the name of your podcast. Some podcasters also use social media such as Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, etc. to promote their podcast. If you don't have time to maintain social media outlets, I'd recommend just having a podcast and website and perhaps YouTube. Your website is great to feature such items as podcast show notes, videos further explaining the podcast, calendar of events, links to all podcast episodes, etc. Your website should be considered the hub of all your podcast and online activities. Personally, I use Bluehost as my website host and use MobiRise at www.mobirise.com as my website design software. If you sign up for Bluehost, please use my affiliate link, which is www.bluehost.com forward slash track forward slash opportuno. It will cost you nothing extra, but I'll receive an affiliate commission for recommending Bluehost to you. Step 3. Path to Podcasting, Hardware and Software, Get Podcast Software and Hardware. Your podcast hardware and software will depend a lot on your budget and where and how you podcast. Fortunately, in the digital age, we can get great audio with minimal, inexpensive software and hardware. I like to keep things affordable, portable, and simple. I think one reason that slows people down that want to produce online video and audio for podcast is not only lacking the knowledge of how to do it, but they think they need the latest expensive equipment before beginning. I think audience retention, and repeat visits for online videos and podcasts are dependent on the quality of three prioritized items. Number one, content. Number two, audio. And number three, video if video is used for your podcast. This link is to a great video on the Woody Piano Shack YouTube channel about various mics you can use for your podcast or YouTube. I would recommend to start out with a 
minimalist approach to record video and audio. What amazes me and encourages me to see how people do great things using just the things they have or can afford, starting where they are with what they have, and many others having the same dream will procrastinate or never take the first step because they feel that what they have or can afford will not achieve the high standards they envision they must obtain. You can achieve great video and audio even if on a tight budget, and in many or most instances, less and simpler is better. The digital age versus the old analog record-to-tape age is truly remarkable. Now, With digital recording on laptop and portable recorders, people can create their own music or audio content with great audio quality suitable for radio and podcast. Having great audio for podcast is your number one priority for audience retention. I have several videos on my YouTube channel about how to edit for best audio using the free audio editor known as Audacity. I won't go into much detail on hardware and software recommendation other than let you know the software and hardware I'm currently using for podcasts and our videos is. Software, Audacity, for editing and recording audio. ID3 Editor, to tag MP3 files for your podcast host, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcast, etc. Corel Video Studio Ultimate, for editing video. Hardware, microphones, Zoom H1 as a digital recorder and as a USB mic to use with PC. Newest version of Zoom H1 is Zoom H1N. Lavalier mic, Clippy Mono EM172 microphone. Deity M mic D3 shotgun mic tripods Sobrovo camera monopod 70 inch tripod cam kicks 3 in 1 tripod camera rigs and accessories a rig cage to mount tripod or handhold to add camera, mic, lights, etc. to lights Aperture AL M9 Amaron LED mini light video camera Hawkeye Firefly eight SE Action Camera. Step 4. Path Podcasting. Create Podcast Art. Your podcast cover art dimension should be 3000 by 3000 pixels, saved as JPG or PNG file. Bright. Contrasting colors are good. Use very little text in a readable font, large enough text to be read easily. I created my artwork using the free photo editor paint.net 
available at www.getpaint.net. That's www.getpaint.net. Or you can easily find people that will do your podcast cover art at fiverr.com. That's www.fiverr.com. Simply access fiverr.com and enter search for podcast cover artwork and you'll get many reasonable bids of people willing to do your podcast artwork for you. For royalty-free, no attribution artwork, I recommend pixabay.com. That's P-I-X-A-B-A-Y dot C-O-M. Make sure the image you choose on pixabay.com states free for commercial use, no attribution required. And if you use one of the free images, I suggest you make an optional donation for that image to the person that provided that image. Using paint.net, I'll illustrate how you can make your podcast art. You can either have someone create your podcast artwork for you, or create your own podcast artwork. If you'd like to have someone create your podcast work for you, you can go to Fiverr, that's www.fiverr.com. Right now, I'm on the Fiverr website. I'm simply going to enter podcast artwork. And here it brings up a lot of creative design people that are willing to create your podcast cover artwork. Here's one starting at $25, starting at $120, starting at $20. And you'll even see some starting as low as $5 and $10. So, if you don't want to, or don't know how to create your podcast cover art, you can try an online service like Fiverr.com. If you'd like to create your own podcast cover artwork, I will show you how I created my podcast cover artwork to give you an idea how you can create your own podcast cover artwork if you'd like to. First, I chose an image which was royalty free and a free image and plus no attribution required. In other words, you could use the image commercially and you did not have to give credit to anyone that you were using that image. And you can get those type of images on pixabay.com, which is P-I-X-A-B-A-Y dot C-O-M. And that's the website I'm on right now. And just to give you a fictitious example, let's say, for instance, you had an interest in aardvarks and you wanted to do a podcast about aardvarks. Those are the ant eaters that live in the sub Saharan 
areas of Africa. The proper name farm is Aardvarks. So you just type A A R D V A R K. And let's see what type of images they have. And you do see that they have many images on Aardvarks. And this is a rather cute image here of an aardvark, a cartoon character. So let's download it. Now, prior to downloading, you want to make sure that that image states that it is free for commercial use, no attribution required. And that's exactly what this aardvark image states. So we're going to download it. And I'd recommend just downloading the highest resolution that's available. Click download. Now once you click download, or downloaded the image, it will ask you to donate. Of course, it says Crediting isn't required. But if you plan to use the image, I would suggest making a donation, small or large as you like, maybe $5 or up. And that would help the originators of these images to be able to put more images up on Pixabay and encourage them. So now we've downloaded our Aardvark image. After you've downloaded your podcast artwork or had someone design it for you, download and install a program called Paint Dot net, which is a free photo image editor available from www.getpaint.net, which is spelled www.getpaint.net, which I'm on their website now, and simply download the software and install it. It will ask for a donation, but a donation is optional, and that's your call whether you'd like to donate or not. Once you have downloaded and installed Paint.net, open up the software, and this is Paint.net software opened. And you'll see I have Paint.net version 4.2. First, what you want to do is open a new image. Just go to File, New, and you want to set the dimensions to 3000 by 3000 pixels. And you'll notice I don't have maintain aspect ratio box checked, but we just enter 3000 pixels by 3000 pixels. Click OK. This gives us a palette to work with of 3,000 by 3,000 pixels. Now, if you want a background color to bring up a color wheel up here to right top corner, just click on this color wheel, and you'll see it brings it up here. Let's say, for instance, you want a yellow background. Just find yellow on your color wheel. Click it. And this shows what color we have. And go 
up here to the drop down box under tool go to paint bucket and go to the 3000 by 3000 section we've created click and now we have a yellow background now let's open up the aardvark image that we downloaded and here it is so you just click on it and it brings up the aardvark image which we see here so we have two images opened up in this program our clear palette 3000 by 3000 pixels that we put a yellow background to and the aardvark image that we downloaded off of Pixabay. So whatever section you want to copy into the palette, just simply go to Tool, Rectangular, Select, and you can do a small section, Edit, Undo, or if you want to do the entire aardvark, which I do, I'm just going to select the entire aardvark. Click on Edit, Copy, and I'm going to go to our 3000 by 3000 pixel palette. Select Edit again. Paste into New Layer. And it brings our aardvark into our 3000 by 3000 area to work with. Now here, you can move aardvark anywhere you want to within this image. Plus, you can resize. You can drag the corner like that and make it as small or as large as you'd like to. So let's just say, let's put it right here to where we'll have some room for some text under it. And I'm going to make this a little smaller so we'll see the entire. And the way I did that, I just you just hold down your control key and do the thumb wheel to make it larger or smaller. I think I need a little bit more room if I'm going to put some text on the bottom. So I'm going to make our aardvark a little smaller. And so that should give me room right here in this section along the bottom to enter our podcast name. So next, prior to entering the podcast name, this is several layers, and we need to export, file, save as, going to export, this image as podcast art work. I'm going to export it as a JPG file. I don't want to do 100% quality, so just make sure it's all the way over here on 100%. And this says if you want to flatten the image. And what we do want is to click on flatten, to flatten the image to where we can work further with the image to put text on it. So let's do file, open. We just created podcast artwork. So now we have our podcast artwork, I'm going to make it a little smaller to where we see the entire podcast cover artwork. 
Now we want to write some type of text. And let's go to our drop down box under Tool, select Text, and we want a color. Now you can select the color from your text on the color wheel, or here's another way you can do it. Drop down box, color picker. Say, for instance, she wanted the text to be this black. I'm going to go right up here on this section on the ear, on the aardvark. Just left click, and I've selected that particular color for my text. Now let's go back here and select text again. For text, you have a lot of different fonts that you can choose. And whichever font you'd like to choose. This is just an example, not trying to get too artistic with it, just to give you an example how you can create your own artwork. And let's just locate anyone. Arial Black will choose. And then we have the size of the font. It's going to be pretty large. Let's try 84 and see what that does. 84. Looks like it's going to be a little too small. So let's change that up to maybe 144. Maybe even larger. 192. And we could probably even go a little larger than that. 216. And let's say we don't have a podcast name, but let's just call it Name of Podcast. And then once you write the name of the podcast here, you can take this and drag it anywhere you want. I'm going to reduce the size of the picture again here. So let's drag it right here, center it. And so what we have done, we have actually created artwork. And now we need to save it. So we have our artwork, have name of the podcast. It's the right size, 3,000 by 3,000 pixels. So file, save as. And let's just save it the same thing, podcast artwork. So it says already exists, replace it. So let's just overwrite that one, 100%. Yes. So now if we were to open up the file that we just saved, podcast artwork, you'll see that we now have created artwork for our podcast. And basically, this would be the podcast cover artwork that you'll use for your podcast. Step five, path podcasting, record your first podcast. There are so many tutorials on proper recording techniques. I won't attempt to go into detail here, but just touch on the basics of what I feel to be important for great audio. Number one, quiet recording location. Number two, Quality mic. Unless you have a very quiet environment, would recommend a dynamic mic over a condenser mic. Unless it's a shotgun mic, you need to talk much closer to a dynamic mic 
as compared to a condenser mic. And with a dynamic mic, you might need a pop filter to prevent plosives, since you'll need to talk close to the mic. This sentence contains all plosive words. Pizza Place Pan can still spill pizza. Try this plosive word test. Place the palm of your hand about one inch in front of your mouth and say, Pizza Place Pan can still spill pizza. You'll feel a puff of air on the palm of your hand when speaking each of these plosive words. If your mic is too close to your mouth, the mic will record the wind sound. A pop filter deflects the plosive puff of air away from the mic to prevent plosives being recorded. There are a few techniques you can use to prevent plosives from making unwanted wind sounds in your recording. Use a pop filter and or use a mic with a built-in pop filter. Angle your mouth to where wind is not directly pointed at the center of mic. Distance your mouth from the mic. A shotgun dynamic mic allows you to speak a little further from the mic without the need of a pop filter. Unless circumstances require it, for better audio, I'd recommend to use a regular mic over a lapel mic. Number three. Correct distance from mic to mouth to cut down on ambient room noise. You want to practice to learn the best distance from the mouth to the mic that produces best audio quality. Number four. Original raw recording levels should be around minus 12 dB to minus 20 dB with the preference being closer to minus 12 dB. Be careful to never clip audio. Final mastered audio will be approximately 0 dB to minus 6 dB. I have several videos on my YouTube channel about editing audio using Audacity to achieve correct loudness. Number five, always record as a WAV file and edit as a WAV file. A WAV file is not compressed and will yield a better recording and your editor will have more file to edit with and therefore be able to do a better edit of your audio. Set digital recorder 24-bit 48 kilohertz or 24 bit 96 kilohertz. I set my wave on Zoom H1 to 24 bit 96 kilohertz. The only time you want an MP3 file is after your final edit and then you convert to MP3 to tag with MetaTag data to upload the MP3 to your podcast host. Number six, narrate from a script. In the case of an interview, work off of an outline, but venture off the outline if the conversation gets a little off track from your outline. Number seven, if you have more than one speaker in your podcast, then each speaker should have their own mic and each speaker should be recorded to a separate channel. 
In edit, you'll be able to match audio levels and edit each track separately. Number eight, edit out coughs, ahs, ums, a's, mistakes, pauses in the conversation, etc., as much as possible without becoming obsessive about it. Number nine, don't overmaster with equalizers, de-essers, limiters, compressors, etc. With audio, the original raw audio, edited using a noise limiter plus compressor to balance and raise audio levels are the main mastering tools you need. I have several videos on YouTube explaining how to edit audio. And number 10, practice, practice, and practice until you get great audio. It's all about getting that original raw audio right with correct audio levels by using a good mic with proper mic positioning distance and angle to mouth in a good recording environment. And then mastering your raw original audio to get the noise floor quiet, audio levels balanced, and correct loudness levels. Step 6. Path Podcasting. Export to MP3 and tag. Podcasts can be audio or video. Most commonly, people think a podcast as being audio. For audio, the podcast industry has adopted the MP3 audio format. It's best to record audio in WAV format plus edit audio in WAV format. A WAV file contains more data for your editor to work with. Therefore, your audio editor will do a better job editing with a non-compressed WAV audio file than with a compressed MP3 audio file. However, MP3 is a file format you must upload to your podcast host and podcast players like iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcast, etc. When recording as a WAV file, record at least 48 kilohertz, 24 bit, and preferably 96 kilohertz, 24 bit. When converting the WAV to a MP3 file, I recommend 128 kilobytes. 44,100 sample rate, constant as a bitrate mode, and mono rather than stereo. If your podcast is mostly music and about music, then you might consider stereo rather than mono. There are many audio converter programs that will convert your WAV file to a MP3 file. You can simply use the iTunes software you have installed on your computer to convert your WAV file to an MP3 file, available at www.itunes.com, or use Audacity Audio Editor to export as a MP3 file, Audacity version 2.3.2, or later, includes the MP3 export feature. Earlier versions of Audacity, prior to version 2.3.2, require you to install the MP3 export software separate from the original installation. Audacity can be downloaded free from www.audacityteam.org at spelled www. A-U-D-A-C 
I-T-Y-T-E-A-M dot O-R-G, or use any video converter to convert a WAV file to a MP3 file. Any video converter has a free and paid version. Any video converter is available from www.any-video-converter.com. That's www.any-video-converter.com. Or Total Audio MP3 Converter, which is a paid version for a small purchase price with free lifetime upgrades. Total Audio MP3 Converter is available at www.hootech.com. That's spelled www.hootech.co. M. Your podcast host and podcast players like iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcast, etc. will require the MP3 file be tagged with metadata, also known as ID3 tags. The 3 in ID is short for MP3 and ID is for identification, so ID3 basically means you're identifying the MP3 file. Rather than tagging your MP3 files when exporting from your DAW, which stands for Digital Audio Workstation, such as Audacity, etc., would recommend using a standalone MP3 tagging software. The MP3 metadata tagging software I use and recommend costs $15, but is well worth it. This software, ID3 Editor, available from www.pa dash software.com that's spelled www.pa dash s-o-f-t-w-a-r-e dot c-o-m for this tutorial i'll use this id3 editor from pa dash software.com there's other methods and mp3 metadata tagging software you can use to tag your MP3 files for free, such as using iTunes to tag your MP3 file. MP3 tag, free, but ask for an optional donation, available from www.mp3tag.de. That's spelled www.mp3tag.de and many more. However, I've used and like the ID3 editor and believe it will be $15 well spent if you decide to purchase ID3 editor. The main items you'll be identifying in your MP3 file for a podcast will be Track, the number of this particular episode, title, podcast episode title and number, example, episode one, the name of this episode, artist, first name, last name of all in the podcast, album, the name of your podcast channel, Year, year this episode published, genre, if a podcast, just enter podcast for the genre. Comment, a brief description of this particular episode. Optionally, you can add keywords in the comment section. Composer, 
first name, last name, original artist, first name, last name, copyright, who or what legal entity owns copyright to this podcast, album art, add your podcast cover artwork, URL, your website, if any, you have for this podcast. Below is a link to the explanation of these fields by the software developer PA Software. Now click on this link just to give you an idea what that looks like. So supported ID fields, and it gives you the explanation of each field more detail than I gave, and it gives the explanation for each of the fields. So I won't go over each of these, but I just wanted you to have access to this link where you could see how to enter each of the fields in ID3 Editor. This link is available at www.pa-software.com forward slash ID3 E-D-I-T-O-R forward slash S-U-P-P-O-R-T-E-D-F-I-E-L-D-S forward slash. The following video will demonstrate how to tag your MP3 file using ID3 Editor. This is an example how you can add metadata tag information to your MP3 file prior to uploading your MP3 file to your podcast host. I'm using Windows 10, and I've just opened up the software program ID3 Editor. And the first thing it does, it gives you a choice to open up the MP3 file, which you wish to add metadata tag information to. And here we have a couple examples. We have episode one, name of this particular episode, and episode two, name of this particular episode. Of course, the name of this particular episode would be the name of your podcast. So we're going to left-click on episode one, and it brings up the entry form, and what we'll do is now enter this information. So the first thing we'll do is go up to track, and track is the number of this particular episode. So just enter number one for track. Title, that's the podcast episode title. And optionally, you can add a number. You can just simply add the title here. Now, the way I like to do it, and you don't have to, you can just add the title. But I like to actually put EP, which is an abbreviation for episode, number one, colon, space, and then the name of this episode. For artist, that's the first name, last name of all in the podcast. Most likely, it's just you, unless you have guest or co-host. So, enter your first name, last name, Album is the name of your podcast channel. Year, the year that this podcast was recorded. So we'll put the current year, 2019. Genre, you have a drop-down box you can choose from. 
you need to enter podcast, which it doesn't have podcast on the drop down box, so simply just type podcast here. Comments. This would be the description for this particular podcast. So I'm going to enter here description for episode one. Now at this point, I want you to highlight, right click, copy this podcast description because we'll actually be pasting it in several other areas later on while we're tagging this MP3 file. Composer. And most likely it's just you. So we're going to put first name, last name, original artist, and most likely it's just you again, so we're going to put first name, last name, copyright, that's who or what legal entity owns copyright to this podcast. So most likely it's just you where you put your first name and last name, or it could be a company, corporation, LLC, that owns the copyright. But for this example, we're just going to use a first name and last name. And URL, URL is your website, if you have one, for this podcast. And let's say that your website is called mypodcastname.com. So there you would enter the name of your podcast. Now let's go ahead to the next step, which enters the information over here and makes it pretty easy because if you simply click on this arrow right here, click on the arrow and it will copy this information from here to over here. And so we left click on the arrow and you see it auto populated the information here. So next step, click on the extended tab, go down to subtitle. And this is where we're going to copy our description that we typed in previously in the comment section. So just right click, paste. Description for episode one. Next, we click on the podcast tab. Go down to description. Right click. Paste. What we do next is go over to add your image here. Left click on add. And you find your podcast artwork. Now, this is a sample podcast artwork we created previously, which we'll just click on. So, this will be your podcast artwork. And the same podcast artwork you use in your first episode, you just use it for episode two, three, four, and so on. And we also click on Lyrics and add the description. So we right-click, paste. So we paste that same description that we copied earlier into Lyrics. Now we have completed adding all the metadata tag information 
into episode one and be sure to click on update. Now the MP3 file has added to it all the information we just entered. Let's say a week or two goes by and you record episode number two and you need to also enter metadata tag information into that mp3 file. Then you open up ID3 editor and you choose episode two. Now, a very helpful feature in ID3 Editor, it allows you to copy information from another MP3 file that has been added metadata tag information into it. You can copy it into this MP3 file. And the way you do that, you go to File, load tag data and we just have entered information into episode one so let's click on it and you see that it copied information from episode one into episode two it copied most of the information but not all of the information we need to go back in and edit some of the fields, as well as uh, add information to the fields. So this is episode two. As we go, enter track two, since it's episode two. And the title, of course, that's the podcast episode title. And optionally, put the number. And again, the way I like to write it is abbreviate episode two colon name of this particular episode. And we already have the first name, last name here. Stays the same. The name of your podcast channel, that stays the same. And it may be a different year say it's say it's rolled over into 2020 so let's just enter 2020 here podcast that stays the same now your description will be different so whatever description is now it's going to be whatever the description is for podcast episode two so again we're going to use this description in several other places. So let's right click copy composer. If it's you again, just put your first name, last name here, original artist. Again, if it's you, that's the original artist. Just enter first name, last name. And it held on to the copyright information. And most likely it's still the same. And it held on to the URL information. So you don't have to re-enter that. And go over here so we can add the information in this section too. Left click on this arrow and you see now added track two, added episode two title. Now click on the extended tab and remove the description here and paste in the description that we copied earlier, which is description for episode two. Go to podcast 
And down here, a description. Paste the description for episode two. And that's it. Because, well, there's one more place here. Lyrics. Click on lyrics. Right click. Paste the description. And we already have our podcast artwork, which it hung on to. So after we get all that information added, we click on update. And that update saves all the information we just added into episode 2, into the episode 2 MP3 file. Now, your MP3 file is ready to upload to your podcast host. Step 7, Path Podcasting. Produce about five podcasts before hosting. Prior to posting your first podcast, it's recommended you produce about five podcasts. Having five podcasts ahead will ensure you'll be able to post consistently. Once people discover and like your podcast, they will expect consistent, continued podcast. When you're not able to produce podcasts consistently, it's best to have several podcasts ahead to allow your podcast to be heard consistently on your predetermined timetable. Step 8. Path to Podcasting. Secure Podcast Host. You'll need to choose a podcast hosting site to upload your tagged MP3 to. Pinecast provides a unique RSS feed URL for each podcast that you host on pinecast.com. That's spelled www.pinecast.com. This unique RSS feed URL can be shared using Pinecast with other major directories such as iTunes, Google Podcast, Spotify, etc. There are many podcasting hosting sites, even a few free ones. You want to be careful about choosing a free podcast hosting site, as many free podcast sites are ad-supported, meaning your podcast listeners will be advertised to by ads from the podcast hosting site. Two free ad-supported podcast hosts are anchor.fm, that's spelled www. A-N-C-H-O-R dot F-M and Wooshka dot com That's spelled www dot W-H-O-O-S-H-K-A-A dot C-O-M Unless you just simply cannot afford to pay a monthly fee for a podcast host I recommend you pay a podcast host that is not ad-supported. Free is a good thing, and sometimes a necessary thing, if you cannot afford to pay a podcasting hosting site. My choice for a paid podcast hosting site is Pinecast. Dot com. My reason for choosing Pinecast is low monthly fee as compared to other podcast hosts, 
Pinecast is not ad supported as many free podcast hosts are. Pinecast provides unlimited bandwidth and unlimited podcast. And you can easily share your podcast with other major directories such as iTunes, Google Podcast, Spotify, etc. directly from Pinecast. Also, Pinecast has great support. Pinecast does have a free limited version if you just want to get started for free or just want to try Pinecast. To secure Pinecast and upload your tagged MP3 file, number one, sign up for a free or paid podcasting hosting at pinecast.com. Again, that's spelled www.pinecast.com. Number two, create, which basically means to upload your tagged MP3 file, your first podcast on Pinecast. If you fail to tag MP3 file, Pinecast will prompt you during upload to add basic tags and artwork. However, it is highly recommended you tag your own MP3 files prior to upload rather than tag your MP3 file on your podcast hosting site. Number three, submit your podcast to other podcast players like iTunes, Google Podcast, Spotify, etc. At the time of this video, Pinecast is working on a new dashboard. Rather than make an online video of how to upload your tagged MP3 file and share with other directories on Pinecast, I refer you to the excellent tutorials and support on podcast in the Pinecast website. The information at the Pinecast support link will provide you great information on how to use Pinecast. The Pinecast support link is www.help.pinecast.com forward slash en forward slash and to spell that out, it's www.help.pinecast.com forward slash e in forward slash. Step 9. Path to Podcasting. Post first podcast on host and other channels. This support link at pinecast.com explains how Pinecast allows you to host your MP3 file and share your podcast with other major directories like iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, etc. I'm going to click on this support link. The question is, how will people listen to my podcast? Someone submitted a question. Can I submit my show to Apple Podcast and iTunes, Google Play, and others? The answer was, once you've created a new podcast or imported a podcast on Pinecast and updated your 
first episode, your show is ready to be heard. Pinecast publishes an RSS feed for your show. This is the key to getting your podcast listed on major directories. On your podcast dashboard, use the RSS feed section to submit your show to Apple and Google. Clicking the links will take you to the respective portals. Google and Apple will require you to create an account and provide your RSS feed. After an approval process, your podcast will be listed. We also recommend submitting your podcast to Spotify. You can do that by clicking the Settings, Spotify tab on your podcast dashboard. Be sure to read the instructions. You do not need to create an account with Spotify to submit your show. Directories like these will automatically check your feed for updates every day or so, so you don't need to submit your feed a second time. After you've submitted your podcast, listeners and subscribers will begin appearing in your podcast analytics. Listens from apps, the embed widget, and direct listeners to your audio URLs will be included. You can see which apps and sources these listens come from by choosing the appropriate analytics view from the drop-down menu. Step 10. Path to Podcasting Determine future podcast schedule and post consistently. People will gravitate toward podcasts they can rely on to be there on a consistent, timely manner. You choose how consistent you want to post your podcast. You could post your podcast twice a week, once a week, once every two weeks, or once a month. Just be sure your podcast is posted on your predetermined schedule. If you're confident you'll be able to have a consistent podcast, you might, at the end of your podcast, say something like, Thanks for listening to our podcast. Our next podcast will be available on Tuesday of next week. Or if you could be even more specific, providing a date, stating something like, Our next podcast will be available on Tuesday of next week, December 10, 2019. If your podcast is promised for Tuesday of next week, then you'll want to post your podcast for late in the day on Monday of the next week, so your podcast will be available at the start of Tuesday. I would recommend posting using Eastern Standard Time so that your podcast will be sure to be on the correct scheduled date of the next podcast, regardless of which United States time zone the listener is from. People lead busy lives and many listen to podcasts on the go. Knowing the date your podcast will be available will allow people the opportunity to know when they can listen to your podcast on their commute, workout, bike ride, etc. Better to have quality podcast than quantity podcast, but very important that your podcast be posted on a consistent basis. 
that ends this 10-step tutorial I call The Path to Podcasting. I hope this tutorial has been of value to you, and I wish you much success with your podcast. Just do one step at a time, and soon you'll have your first podcast uploaded to your podcast host. Thank you. Please visit our website, optuno.org. That's spelled O-P-O-R-T-U-N-O dot O-R-G for more items that may be of interest to you. Thank you.